Shalom, shalom. This is your brother Zariah Allah down here at the GMS Virginia camp. Back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai as commanded to do so. Uh, as you can see, the topic um, is going into the uh, the microchip, okay? The MOTB, okay? As we know as the, the, the scriptures, okay? Which is, it was something that you cannot repent from, all right? Now, as you can see in this article, uh, it, it goes into it, uh, but before I get started, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechah HaKodash, that were honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Kazak Shalawam to the hopeful elect, and to you brothers out there that's pushing this word in truth sincerity. All right, may the election be upon your house. All right, so going into this article, it says FDA approves computer chip for humans. Okay, and this was dated back in October 13th in 2004 all right and the reason i'm bringing out this article because even though the fda approved it a, a long time ago okay uh, you can only imagine how far they have uh, accomplished you know certain things of how they upgraded this technology man which i'm going to get into it as, as far as the scriptures but i just want to read it out real quick and then i'll grab something else as well okay so it says a medical milestone or privacy invasion okay it says a tiny computer chip approved Wednesday for implantation in a patient's arm can speed vital information about a patient's medical history to doctors and hospitals. Okay, so this is back in 24. Okay, so it said that it can do the, uh, have your medical history and, and, and things of that nature. So all the immunizations that you may have took in, in your life, okay, any diseases that you may have caught, um, as far as like arthritis and, and, and things and that, basically all of your medical history. Okay, they have all of that on this little rice uh, uh chip. Okay, and um, as you can see now, um, there's this thing on TikTok, a little trend. They call it the Chip Girl, man. All right, and she goes around advertising this this microchip, how she can unlock doors. Okay, whether that be in her house, uh, the safes. Okay, she can make payments at your uh, local grocery store. Okay, and any convenience store and, and things of that nature, man. Okay, she's pushing conveniency. Or right, for this damn devil, man. Okay, and it's it's what it's it's appealing to the average you know person who think that oh this this is cool new technology and and things of that nature. But no, that's not the case at all. It's a lot deeper than that, man. And everyone takes uh you know this thing for face value, man. They don't go in and do research. They don't go into the scriptures and realize that this very well makes you an enemy of your how about shimmy all shy, man. All right, so continuing on with this article, it says, but critics warn that it can open new ways to imperil the confidentiality of medical records. It says the Food and Drug Administration said Wednesday that applied digital solutions at Delray Beach, FLA, could market the very chip and implantable computer chip about the size of a grain of rice for medical purposes. Okay, it says with the pinch of a syringe, right, the microchip is inserted under the skin in a procedure that takes less than 20 minutes and leaves no stitches. Silently and invisible, the doormat mint chip stores a code that releases patient-specific information when a scanner passes over it, okay? And, and that's beautiful because it's, it's speaking about a code, okay? And when you break down, you know, the whole 666 thing, okay, it goes into what? Uh, uh, the, the barcode, the number of his name, man, okay? Which is uh, something that you... uh that they can scan for you to, uh, you know, make purchases and uh, the things that I mentioned earlier, just to, you know, pull up your information or, or track your well-being, man, wherever you may go, all right? And, and, and that's a part of this damn, you know, beast system, okay? Now, I want to get the scripture real quick, okay? I want to go to Revelation uh, chapter 13, okay? And I start at verse 15. It says, and he had power to give life, okay? Now, who was that he? This is what you have to ask yourself, man. Okay, you have to examine the scriptures. Who's the he? Okay, the he is what? Esau, Edom, the international bankers, man. The ones who are ruling this society, the ruling of the, uh, the world, okay? The, that's the Rockefellers, the, the Rothschilds, okay? The ones who are in, in control of the, uh, the monetary system, man, okay? And it says he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, okay? Unto the image of the beast, okay? So what is that image? The image goes in, you know, to the ways of other philosophies of, of, of this world. Okay, containing uh you know the homosexuality, okay, going into um uh the feminism, okay, uh basically the 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 peeling of, of, of this chip, okay, so he's giving life unto the image of it because the image is something that you see, okay, there's something that you 
Uh, so say for an instance, you have these rappers, they try to portray this image of something that they're not. Okay, so what this damn devil's doing, he's portraying the image saying that it's okay to get this thing. Okay, all, all you have to do is uh, uh, take this uh, MOTB, this implanted chip, and it'll make your life easier. You'll be more convenient. Okay, things will go a lot smoother for you, man. And we may even give you a bonus if you take it, you know. And that's the that's the thing that he he he's pushing, man. He's pushing that carnality, something that is uh, appeasing to your flesh, man. Okay, so he said he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, man. And what is the beast? Beast going into the whole power structure, okay, of the Roman Empire, man. The revival of the Roman Empire, man. And the, the power infrastructure, okay, is going to be what? And, and, and forcing this, man. Okay, via the what? The the, the FEMA camps. Okay, when you're going to have those guillotines everywhere. Okay, and ultimately, uh, uh, martial law, man. Okay, this damn devil is going to bring chaos. Okay, if you don't take his damn chase, he's going to bring chaos. He's going to bring all these... You know, this, this wrath upon you to, to make you take it, to serve and, and worship him. And if you don't, then what? You're going to be killed. All right. So it says, verse 16, it says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, man. Okay. Now, a lot of people, they say, oh, well, it just says, you know, your right hand. So may, if I get into my left, I'm good. No. The scriptures also speak about it in 14. Revelations 14 and 9, it, it talks about either hand, okay? And you'll be, you know, destroyed, roughly paraphrasing, man, okay? And do you have Elon Musk going into that, you know, the, the Neuralink chip, okay? So that's, it's a it's a physical thing that's being inserted into your body, man, okay? Because when you go into that word, oh, it's lucky. Go into that word, Mark, right? Because we just read, all right, in that article... It said that what? It, it it came by like a syringe. Oh, so like it. Click the wrong thing. Hold up, hold up. Okay, come on. So you go into the word mark. The Greek word is karagma, right? So you sort of strong info. It says karagma. It says a scratch or etching, a stamp, a badge of certitude, servitude, man. A graven mark. And when you grave in something, it means it's something physical. It means you're carving into something, man. Okay, it's a sculptured figure, man. Okay, when you sculpt something, you're, you're, you're carving into it. You mean you have to use like a a, a knife or, or whatever the case may be. You have to use a sharp object, man. Okay, it says as a badge of certitude, man. So back then in the ancient times, we had this thing called a, a, a O. Okay, so say for instance, you a Hebrew Israelite. Okay, another Hebrew Israelite owns you. And, and, and let's say he may have a, a beautiful woman on, on his property. You get with that woman, you'll have children and, and, and things of that nature, right? Uh, according to the law, after the six or seven years, okay, after you don't work for this man, you will uh, obtain, you know, resources to be able to have your own farm and, you know what I'm saying, uh, basically have... Have your own household, man. Build it up your household, man. And that's what ha happened with uh, our forefather, Jacob. He worked for Lebanon for, what, 17 years. He was able to get, you know, all the cattle. He got two women. Uh, uh, um, what was it? Uh, Rebecca. Oh, Rachel. Oh, Salaki. I think it was Rachel. It was Rachel and Leah. That's who it was. Salaki. Excuse me on that. Yeah, so he had end up getting Rachel and Leah. Okay. Now, let's say, for instance, okay, he, he, uh, he, he, uh, had children with them and, and things of that nature, and the boss didn't want to let the uh, the woman go. Okay, that wasn't a part of the deal. This man will have to get a, a O in his ear saying that I love my master and that I will serve you for the rest of my life. Okay, that was his badge of servitude. So in instance, it's the same thing now, okay, um, because what the scriptures say, there's nothing new under the sun. So now this is going to be a physical badge of servitude that's going to, uh, be put into your body, and you're telling the Most High, Yahweh, right, that Esau Edom, okay, is his master, right, is your master, and that you want to serve him for the rest of your life, okay, and when you do that, that's you taking that, that the karakma, and there's no repentance from that, you can't turn back to the Lord, because what does the scriptures also say, you cannot serve two masters, because you love the one, and despise the other, man, all right, so this is why it's very important to bring out this information, man, because we're coming in those times where soon it's going to be mandatory, all right? And you're going to have to choose between serving Yahweh Shai or 
serving your flesh by serving, you know, Esau, Edom, or this damn devil, something that's convenient for you to be able to live, have food on your table, you know, a nice job, car, nice house, and, and all those different things, you know, the cares of this world, all right? So, um, in the, um, the root word of karagma also goes into what? Karaks, right? So it says, uh, it says to sharpen, to point, a kin. It says, uh, it says to sharpen to a point. It says uh, a stake, a palisade, a ramper, right? So uh, a stake, okay? A stake is something like like a sharp object, like a like a syringe, okay? Because when you go back to this article, it said that the way that it's going to be inserted into your body was by a syringe, okay? So it says uh, with the pinch of a syringe, okay? That pinch, so that's being jammed into your your force, not your force, can slot <laughs> The uh, the outer part of your skin. It says the microchip is inserted under the skin in a procedure that takes less than twenty minutes and leaves no stitches. Silently and invisible, the dormant chip stores a code that releases a patient-specific information when the scanner passes over it. Think UPC code. The identifier emblazoned on a full item brings up its name and price on the cashier screen. Yeah, so. And, and imagine that you're scanning your arm and everything pops up on the screen. Yeah, your address, where you live, where you were born, your birth certificate, your social security number, all your medical records. Okay, how much money you may have in your uh, your bank accounts. Okay, they're going to have all this information put onto this little chip, man. Okay, so they can ultimately track your payments, track where you're going and, and have mass control over the people, man. Okay, in, in this world. All right, and, and this is... And this is a truly wickedness, man, of this damn devil. All right. Now, um, now that we got that out the way, let's finish off this uh, verse and then we get another scripture through the spirit. All right. Um, so this is Revelation. Oh, I'll close that. This is Revelation 13 and 16. It says, and he calls of all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, okay? That's the point. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, man. So it doesn't matter if you're rich. It don't matter if you're a little baby or you're a little Jojo across the street with no money in his pockets, man. All right? <laughs> he's going to he's gonna find some type of way to cause you to get this, you know, karagma, all right? And if the Lord, how about Shemi Shai is not dealing with you, man, you very may well be. This is going to be the one to take it, man. Or you're going to die not taking it, okay? So this is uh, verse 18. It says, Revelation 13, 18, Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of man, and the number is 603 score and 6. So it says, here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding. So the, so the, the men that are on the highways and byways that have the understanding of what the MOTB is, they're the only ones that should be speaking about it. If you don't know it, then don't speak on it. And if you don't believe you know, the true doctrine, okay, of what our elders and apostles have, have given us, man, okay, then ultimately the Lord is not dealing with you, man, okay, that the Spirit is not on you to, to see these things, man, because what the description says, says, make it plain upon tables, all right, I'm just going to get that, all right, this is Hebrews chapter, I mean, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Verse 2, and the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it. Okay, now going back to uh, Revelation, what that was Apostle uh, uh, John, man, on the island of Patmos, writing down the visions, okay, the things that he saw, man, and he made it plain. Okay, I mean, it's easy for the elect to understand, and the, the, the elect, they're going to break it down perfectly, man, through the spirit and power of your Hawaii, Shemi, and they're going to warn the people, man, okay, because it says that he may run that read if it, meaning he's going to be, you know, searching, figuring out the, the, the true answer, okay, he's going to make sure that he got it before he speaks or, or teaches about it, all right, and, and then he's going to spread this word out, man, okay, as the scripture has commanded him to do. All right, it says verse three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, man. We're we're in those times now, but it's not the appointed time yet because what? It has not been made mandatory yet. It says for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Okay, so when you see people getting lined up, okay, for that for that chip, that's letting you know that the, the prophecies did not lie, man. Okay, meaning the prophecies were true, and, and you're you're fucked. All right, if you didn't believe on your how about Shemiel Shah, you're through. 
Okay, it says, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, man. Okay, meaning that it, it may could take a little bit of time. This damn devil want to, you know, do any updates or whatever you want to do, okay, with this chip. However, the way he want to implement it or, or bring it to society to where he makes it mandatory for everyone to get it. And he may tarry on it, but look, man, it, hey, we got to wait for it. Okay, it says, though it tarry, wait for it, because it surely will come. It will not tarry, man. Okay. So it, it's going to come, man. And, and this is one of the last prophecies that we're waiting on, man, including with uh, Jacob's trouble, okay? Because this is going to be a, a evil time. It's going to be an evil day, man, okay? Seeing people being beheaded for not taking this chip, okay? Because this damn devil, hey, man, he, he he's evil, man. He is pure evil, man, all right? Now, I want to get this next scripture, okay? Oh, Salaki, before I get the scripture, I always want to get this other article, man. Because you had this thing going on a couple years back or a year and a half ago, all right? We had the whole, um, oh, actually a year ago, you had the the mandatory uh, maximation, okay? It says typical timeline, a typical maxine development timeline takes five to ten years and sometimes longer to assess whether the maxine is safe and efficient. In clinical trials, complete the regulatory approval process and manufacture sufficient quantity of vaccine doses for widespread distributions, man. So it takes five to ten years for a, a quote-unquote vaccine for it to be FDA approval for it to be uh, safe, okay? And back in that article that I read, okay, it was FDA approved back in 2004. So that means that they were working on it way before then, maybe around five to ten years before that. Okay, because the era was impossible. They, they they were speaking about it. I believe in the eighties or nineties, the early eighties, nineties time frame. You know, and then now you look, you uh, you jump back forward to what two thousand and twenty three. Okay, and it's already been FDA approved. You can only imagine how much it has been increased, how much more they didn't put into this chip for the things that it can do. OK, and that's why they, they're going to see, damn, this this damn guy is, is a he's a miracle, man. They're going to look at it as he's a God, man. OK, and this is why ultimately they're going to take it and serve this damn devil. All right. And forsake you. How about Shimei Shai? More so of the two thirds, man. OK, so, uh, yeah, I just want to get that quick little, you know, fact, because what I searched up was how long does it take, you know, for research for it to, uh, you know, be safe for them to, you know, mandate a, a, a vaccine. OK. So um going uh to um Daniel chapter twelve and I started verse one. It says, And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time people shall be delivered, every one that should be found written in a book, man. Okay, so there's gonna be a time of trouble like never before, man, because this has never happened. Okay, the mandatory of the mic of the MOTB has has never happened. You never had people being beheaded for not taking some or or serving, you know, this God by taking something physically, man. Okay, we've never been in the, in the times how you know famine is gonna come, cannibalism. Okay, uh, uh madman sparing none, uh, not being able to go into another city. Okay, that those things never happened, man. Okay, so when this shit happens on a a, a global scale, man, hey, <laughs> the prophecies are, are going to speak and not lie, man. All right. It says, verse two, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt, man. All right. So you got the elect and the non-elect, man. All right. Verse three. Okay. It says, and they that be wise shall sign as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and forever. Verse 4. This is the point. But thou, O Daniel, shut up thy words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased, man. Okay? So the book was sealed, and now it's being unsealed, okay, by the Lamb of what? Yahweh Shai. And he has revealed the secrets unto his prophets, okay, by giving us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, man. Okay? And it also speaks about knowledge shall be increased. Look at Esau Edom, man. Okay, the the knowledge has been increased. You got the the whole gas and uh, electric cars. You got the whole 
you know, all his, you know, technology with the computers going into about, you know, the smartphones and, you know, all these different things, man. Okay. And more so that the MOTB. Okay. That was the point that I just wanted to get, man. That knowledge shall be increased, man. So this damn devil is, hey, hey it says that this man is, is wiser than Daniel, man. Okay. Because he uh, accomplished a, a diligent search. Okay, so this damn devil is ready to, to, to bring into this thing, man. So we're just waiting for this damn devil to push the button so we can get the hell up out of here, man. But until then, we got to keep bringing out this information and, and warning our people, man. And this is the last precept that I want to get and then I'll close out. All right. This is uh, Revelation chapter 12. And I started uh, verse uh, 12. It says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you. Having great wrath, because he knoweth he have but a short time. Yeah, because Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of the foul of man. So his rulership, okay, his heaven, all right, is 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 about to be thrown and cast down, man. Like it never existed. Okay, so he's knowing that he's seeing these these uh these sightings of the Lord, you know, visiting him with the chariots. Okay, this damn devil is being scared. All right, so now he's gonna you know bring wrath on the people. All right, in, in this world. You know, by bringing out that uh that that chip, okay. But what, the the elect are gonna overcome it, okay. So that's why I'm gonna jump up to uh, verse ten and I read to verse eleven. It says, and I heard a voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength, in the kingdom of our Lord Yahweh, right, and the power of His anointed. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, and who's our accuser of our brethren? Esau, Edom. Okay, it says, which accused them before our power day and night, man. And how did he do that, man? By having us do these uh, abominable things on national TV, okay? Got got Jake out here killing each other, okay? Committing adultery, putting all this poison in their mind through the music or through the food. All these different things, man. And what, he's 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 going before our Lord saying, look what, look, look what Jake doing. Look how I got him, man, okay? And he's laughing, he's scoffing at us, man, okay? He's scoffing at... You know, Israel in their, in their lowest state, man. Okay, that's why it says in, in Limitation 2, uh, 5, it says they clap their hands and, and, and hiss their uh, lips roughly paraphrasing, man. For they have waited for this, man. Okay, because all the other nations, they're, they're with this damn devil. They love seeing us down at our lowest state, man. All right, but what? We're going to overcome it, man. Lord's will. Okay, more so the elect are going to overcome it. Okay, by what? Verse 11. It says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And who was that lamb? Yahweh shot. Okay, so it said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives until death, man. Okay, they ain't love, they wouldn't care about the affairs of this life, man, about the things that is going on and, you know, you know the stuff that's going to distract them and pull them away for this truth, man. Okay, they they love their lives, not they love not their lives until death, meaning they were ready to die for this truth, man, die for the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shai, man, by not taking that chip. And rather uh, death than to worship than this damn devil, man. And that's the type of spirit that we got to be in, okay? We have to be willing to be uh, ready to die for this truth, man, all right? So with that, you know, I pray that this lesson was edifying. I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rahaha Kodash, and double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Kazakh Shalom to the hopeful elect, Kwame Yasharala, and Shalom.